Greetings and salutations. Welcome to this episode of Playwright Spotlight. Before we begin, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video with a friend, and leave a comment down below. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, be sure to leave a five-star review and subscribe to the channel. My guest today is a Los Angeles-based writer and actor. Her play Stay won Best Play and the Sherman C. Ward Jr. Award for Excellence in Playwriting and the Eastern States One Act Play Festival. Outstanding Play Maryland One Act Festival, Pick of the Vine, the Little Fish Theater in San Pedro, and Best Script, Best Play, and Audience Favorite Awards in several other festivals around the country. Her play Dalton was chosen for the ABC Discoverers, New York Talent Showcase, Inc. Fest Playwright Festival in Hollywood, and an official selection of the Los Angeles International Short Film Festival. She recently received the Playwrights Initiative Award from Ivoryton Playhouse in Connecticut for her play Deanna and Paul. She has also written and starred in the critically acclaimed one-woman shows Deep Sea, Dagny, and Hitchhiking to Mars, and is also the creator of the Christmas show Holiday Fever, which ran in Los Angeles for 10 sold-out seasons, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome Dagny Kerr. Hi, Finally. that's me. <laughs> Is you? I, was like, I was like, wow, that sounds crazy. All right, All right. yeah. <laughs> True. So finally, so we've been trying to make this happen for about a, over a year. Yes. Yeah. And here we are. Yes. So. I hope it was worth the wait. It, of course it was <laughs> worth the wait. Like disappointing. You're like, wow. It's No, never. <laughs> and it's always a pleasant opportunity to have in-house guests rather than doing remote things, yes, all, which which sure. is always lovely to have playwrights who, you know, who we could give up the time and, yeah. and come on in. So did you start as an actress and then go into playwriting or did you go into playwriting and then decide I want to be on stage? Oh, no. Um, I've always hated writing. <laughs> really? <laughs> Honestly, yes. I, I So I grew up as an actor. Um, I grew up in Cincinnati and I went to started acting at a very early age. I went to a performing arts school, fourth through 12th grade, and um, writing was not something I never did. I hated writing, any any type of writing. I just, I just, I guess I felt like I didn't have anything to say or I hadn't found my voice yet. Probably it was more likely. Um, but I grew up mainly acting and dancing. Dancing was probably my first and still my first love. So dancing, musical theater, acting. Um, I didn't start writing until I moved out here to Los Angeles. Uh, I was an adult at that point, and literally I was in an acting class, and our acting teacher was like, you know, you you all should be writing something, like j just anything. And so I wrote some thoughts down one time. I remember sitting in my car, and I guess that's what a monologue is. <laughs> it's just a string of thoughts. And I said, well, I have something. It's just some thoughts. And he goes, well, let's hear it. And so I, I did it. And he was like, oh my gosh, that's one of the funniest monologues I've ever heard. He goes, that's a monologue, Dagny. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't know it was officially a monologue. He's like, a monologue is just people, someone talking. It's, and I was like, well, yeah, that's right. You're right. He's like, well, I think you found your voice. And when I was still with that teacher that's when i started doing the one woman show so that's kind of how i started was just expressing myself um they were very big at the time they're not as much now i guess a little bit but yeah i so i'm fairly i consider myself still fairly new to writing so how long has you have you been writing then how long would you say well I guess you say, like, how long have you been writing, and then when was your first play, like, actually? All right, both, <laughs> like, both, why both. not? Well, I mean, maybe writing, like, the past maybe eight years, nine years, mm -hmm. but, you know, not not like every day, every year, you know, I'm, I'm a lazy writer, let's be honest, um, but I had my first play, uh, when I say play, I mean not a solo show, like, I've done a few solo shows, but I had my first play produced yeah i guess like five years ago six years ago was that self-produced yeah. or did you did um so as you know like out here in los angeles we were in um, a writing workshop so a lot of most of uh, my work that got produced around the world started in these writing workshops and they were you know i would say just yeah, they were workshop productions, and then um, all of those plays have been produced uh, all around the world. Yeah, not self-produced. I've been nice. very lucky. What changed can, since you're using the term workshop plays, workshop productions? What did did anything change in those plays? Did you did you watch those performances and say, okay, this doesn't work, this does, or do you think that you were already like solidified in? 
with what you what, what wound up on stage was solidified and you didn't need any changes after um it's different for each piece um for stay for instance that you mentioned um that had gone through a lot of rewrites in the writing workshop so i was able to really work on that i should also mention all those plays are two characters so um uh, it wasn't a very complicated it's not sure. like there's you know three acts and 10 characters you know um so that one when it was produced and when it was put up on its feet, um, even in the workshop forum, worked really well. Um, and then what was exciting about that is then just that was the first time I'd actually uh, released my work into someone else's hands. So that's a really fun journey. Talk, is, talk about that. Unpack that. Yeah. About what, going through that whole, you know, were you nervous? Were you like, were you happy? Were you, has it always been a good experience? No, no, oh, no, it hasn't. You know, you learn a lot about, um, I mean, it's hard when you know as an actor what uh, a play takes, you know, not not many, you know, writers or actors or actors or writers, you know, but, but it definitely, I would definitely encourage, you know, anybody, if you're a writer, you know, take some acting classes and if you're an actor, start writing. I mean, they go hand in hand. And I think um, if you're a writer and you don't know what it takes uh, to, to act, um, it's good to take some classes or just sit in because I just think it gives you a much better um, perspective on just plays in general because ultimately they're meant to be performed, not, you know, read. Um, no, it, it was funny. My So Dalton that you mentioned, yeah. so I had done, I had done the role. So I, I did that. It was a play and, and we did it. It was very successful. And then it got chosen for a play festival here in Los Angeles. And I had the, you know, early on when you're a writer and someone's like, oh, I'm directing your play. You know, oh, great. You, you kind of forget like, oh, you should have like a voice in it. Or, you know, I was very just like, oh, great, you, you know. And it was, um, <laughs> I just mentioned, so it, it it had gone through many rewrites. It was, it, it got chosen for ABC um, Showcase. So, you know, People, the networks were using this to showcase actors. So it was, you know, it had been vetted. I mm -hmm. felt like it wasn't just like a new play that like, hey, let's just put it up and see what happens. Like, so I had the director reach out to me and um, the play is about a, a, a woman who's in her 40s and she's having her first child. And it's funny, but it, it also is very poignant because her stress and is everything is just really involved around her um, lack of connection with her own mother. So there, there is a, a, a part in it where it gets poignant. And he says to me, um, you know, oh gosh, you know, I'm, I'm reading this play and, you know, the part where the, the woman says, you know, my mother, she never really had love for me. He says, it's just too sad. Could you maybe change it to maybe she didn't like her hair and I was, and, and I, I remember I got this like tinge in my body, kind of like, no, but like, I was like, mm -hmm. you know, I, <laughs> so there was many things like that where, and then he, I really, it was the first time I had gotten out of the bubble of my writing workshop. And I, boy, I, I was like asking people, I want to ask you something, you know, my play, like, what do you think? And they're like, wait, what? They're like, no, mm -hmm. that, that person's an idiot. Like they shouldn't be directing your play because they don't understand it. So that was my first experience of, um, and it was actually a quite a, a quite a bad experience. So I, I didn't come to any of the rehearsals. I, I just really put all of my trust in this person. And I should say, it was a it was a writing a play writing workshop. It wasn't a director's showcase. It was to showcase the writers. But I thought, well, let me just you know trust this person. And um, it was horrible. It was a, a drama. It was supposed to be a comedy. It he turned it into a drama. Um, the actor said, "Oh my gosh, this was the worst experience we've ever had." Um, he he didn't understand your play, and you know it was. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I learned a lot from that. You know, you do have to ride that line when it is not in your hands of, yeah, you don't want to be, if you're not asked to be there as the writer, you you don't want to overstep. But you also know when someone's, basically when someone's assigned to, to direct your piece and they're not the right person for it. Um, yeah. 
it was it was a very interesting experience. I learned a lot about um you know how to stand your ground basically even, even no matter if you've been writing for a week like if you know what you're doing and you and the play has been you know workshopped and and it's it's been vetted by a lot of people especially an audience an audience will let you know if your play works <laughs> if it's supposed to be funny and no one's laughing some it's probably not funny <laughs> or either you have really bad actors or both well you here's know. here's the here's my issue for lack of a better word um with that whole thing it's like i'm rewinding and remind me what exactly he said uh, about um he wanted to change it to her mother didn't like her hair but what was the original <clears throat> the moment where she she breaks down she she just expresses her her um why she's so nervous about being a mom and her own mother and talking she just talks about her experience growing up with her own mom and she said my you know my mom never said i love you and he's like oh, it's just too sad it's too sad it was originally comedy and you hence changed it into a drama Yeah, I'm kind of at a loss because it just like if you would have left it alone, it would have kept to me. It would have kept both. I don't know. There's so many things I want to. There's just even in it, there were so many comedic things that we had built into it as actors who had a really good director when we did it. Some hilarious stage direction of what what new things she's coming out eating. He didn't keep any of that. Um, anyway, it sounds like I'm just complaining. No, 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 just, no. I think this is it's a... just for writers to know, like you know. When someone takes on your piece and directs it, they 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 shouldn't change. First of all, they should never change. I learned this the hard way too. They shouldn't be changing writing unless they clear it with you. Because that happened sure. too. I went to see a play and I was like, "Hmm, I didn't I didn't write that line." And they're like, "Oh yeah, we you know we we adjusted it or changed it." And you know, <laughs> I was like, "No, you know." You know, you should never be so excited to have your work done that you don't stand up for it or sure. don't. Um, I think sometimes as artists, especially actors, we're, we will do anything for free. <laughs> and I think sometimes we get so much in that mindset that we forget like, oh, it's one thing to do something for an experience, but it's also something to say, this, this is what I wrote and this is what you signed off on that you wanted to produce. So if there are to be changes let's talk about them first or if I want to present changes, you know, but, um, I think sometimes a lot of, uh, directors, not all of them. Um, I don't know. Sometimes they want to do, they, they want to make it about them and, sure. and show off their directing, um, sometimes. And so I think with writers, we just, you know, just have, that's why a lot of people direct their own things. You just have to be careful with, you know, with your stuff. I don't know. I guess I just always feel like it's always about telling the story that's on the page. Man, exactly. I, I don't know. I, and yeah, you know, I'm not. To, that's not to say that that there might be certain questions that I may have. Where I, you know, we have a mutual friend that that's written plays where there's sometimes I have to you know like let's reel this in a little bit. You know, um, in a few things that I've you know directed. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure, quite sure how many times they've been like workshopped, but you know, that being said, it's always with I would never change anything without, um, without the permission of the playwright. It's funny because we've got had this discussion in a couple episodes in the past, but I it, during noir I would have a couple of directors come up to me. It's like, hey, you need to, we need to change this, this, and that. I'm like, I'm like, well, no, that's that's not my job. He said, it, no, it is your job. I'm like, perhaps it's my job. It's not my place. It's not my place to make these changes without you know, yeah. um, referring to the director as well. Just as actors, also. <laughs> shouldn't be i'm like oh my gosh i have never now that i'm on the other side of it i'm like actors should always memorize what's on the page don't just paraphrase Agree. especially if it's really well written there's a reason you know sometimes writers spend hours going ah oh, should i is it is it was it wasn't this no it was not like just little like rhythmic things it's like well you know don't don't just be like oh, that was close enough 
<laughs> I've seen it. I've been playing with a girl. And she was. I was like, I don't know if that's a line. She could. Yeah, it's close enough. I was like, Oh <laughs> Lord, <laughs> oh my God, I'm glad I didn't write this. <laughs> um, are you a member of the the Drummers Guild? Mm-mm. Okay, I'm John. Uh, uh, I'm curious just because, you know, they've got the Playwrights Bill of Rights, and that's one of the things, like, you yeah. should, nothing should ever be changed without your permission. Yeah. Um, that being said, you do have enough under your belt that you should be. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a goal for 2023. Um, so did you go to, did you just let it go and just let him make the changes that he, he wanted to, and Dalton he, um, wasn't. I, I'm pretty sure Dalton was not your first play either. If I'm not they, mistaken, they were all kind of happened at the same time. Okay. They were like, um, that was my first. Ex- so I had had, um, I've, I've, I've had a lot of fun going around the country, actually oh, seeing the work, sure. um, and I've had some great experiences and some. Actually, they've all been positive. Um, but yeah, that was definitely one of the worst. That was probably the, the first time that I sort of learned learned that because I had been able to see it in person and I was here and I was involved a little bit with it. But um Was yeah. the was the production that was changed, was that local or no? Mm-hmm. Okay. Did you go? Yeah. No, I didn't go to any of the rehearsals, but when I saw the right. show I was like Oh, and then the actors were like, we wish you would have been here. It was such a horrible rehearsal. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, I will next time. I, I should have, because we were invited to go, but it's like, I didn't want to, I didn't want to overstep. And funny enough, that same festival chose another one of my plays the following year. And they, they felt so bad about assigning that guy. They're like, oh my gosh, we are so sorry. Like we thought he was the right person, but clearly not. They're like, he ruined your play. And I was like, and they were like, but we, so this time, this play was very, very difficult. And um, t- it was basically poetry. And you have, you had to know your, your words. And, and that one was um, also interesting. And the, the director was like, I, um, he's like, I just want to warn you, like they're, they're not off book. And I was like, oh, I was like, well, the show's like in the, the tech rehearsal is tomorrow. And I'm like, I mean, it is a really hard play. He goes, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, I'm coming to tech. And he goes, I don't know if you should, because it might make the actors nervous. And I said, oh, good. Then I will. Like, I really was like, you know, because it's your work. I don't know. I feel like as artists, you know, we have to take, we're so, and myself included, we're so afraid sometimes to just not, we don't want to come across as, too you know like we're overstepping or or we're being too bossy or whatever and it's like no like they chose your play they want to do your play if things are falling short you have every right to say i don't want that put up like that so sure but you know it's it's a learning lesson and it, it it feels uncomfortable sometimes to be that way but had your had that piece been produced somewhere else? The the one with all the di- with the dialogue. Correct. It, no, no, the one with with all the changes that were made. Because I know that oh. those those changes were being made locally, and so you know mm-hmm. you were kind of aware of it. You know, and if it was out of state, where you couldn't have you couldn't have been a part of the process, would that have made a difference? No, I mean I've had plays that were out of state where um, they were wonderful. They would you know, reach out and say, we, we've, we've cast this kind of actor, you know, would you be willing to make some tweaks? Oh, of course. Like, yeah, let's, they, we would love to have you watch some rehearsals. Can, can you, can you come in on zoom and, you know, um, and then some, you're not involved at all, which I'm fine too. And then I would be like, Oh, I'm excited. I'm going to go to Minnesota and watch this play. And, you know, I, I love it. I don't have any context. I don't know what the people look like that are in it. Like, I love that too. That's, that's really fun. Good. Yeah. So getting a start in in one woman shows and then transitioning, how 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 was that? What did you learn? Was it a was there a lot of were there a lot of obstacles to overcome from transitioning from a one woman when you're just I don't want to say just storytelling, but mm-hmm. you know, are there 
differences in in the way that the story is formed? Are there still all of those forms or and all those elements where there's the inciting incident? Are there there's the conflict? Are you telling a story? Are you playing different characters? How like what's talk about that whole the the difference between the two and and how you transitioned? Sure, um, my one woman shows were storytelling so they weren't like different characters or anything like that they were based on my own life experiences and just like almost like little vignettes of sorts um but it had um the same elements as just a regular play would um you know it had beginning middle and end it had an arc it you know it, it went somewhere i mean anything that you want from a play it was the same um had poignant moments it had funny moments it it uh had a, a pace to it. it. It, you know, it wasn't just different characters. It was, it was basically a play, but just solo. Um, so no, I don't, I don't think it was very challenging for me. Maybe if I hadn't been an actor, it might've been like, um, you know, but I think when you're in so many plays, you just have an understanding of, of, of them. And, um, yeah. No formal playwriting um background as mm -hmm. far as okay no nope. just um being in plays you know for over 40 years <laughs> <laughs> i think when you're in plays and you start doing a play and reading plays at such a young age and then you're on stage it's just a pretty natural um it's a pretty natural thing almost I, well how do you recognize those those elements then having not been trained I don't to, know. To, I really to think from. about it, but honestly. Um, the good thing about plays is when you write them, <clears throat> you know, you need actors to read it for you. Uh, and sometimes if I didn't have them, I would also record myself. There are like certain sections, like I have one that Dan and Paul play has a real rhythmic se section, and I didn't know if it worked. And I was like, oh, man, I don't really have two people right now I can get together. So I would just record myself doing one draft of just this 10 minute section and then record it. And then I would just listen to it back and I'd be able to tell, Oh, it's much better with this edit. Um, but I mean, I always had act. I think it's really important. Some, a lot of times that was a progression. I would read it myself because I was like, Oh, I don't know if anyone will know how to do this rhythm. Um, but then once you find people, that, that do know how to do it. You're like, oh my gosh, yes. Can you can you read this for me? And can you? And it's it's so important to be able to hear it back. Do you write with the intention of being rhythmic? Do you write rhythmically, knowing that? I think so. I think I'm just a rhythmic person, probably just from dan probably dancing, d dancing and singing. Like I'm very rhythmic, very musical. So I think it's natural. And I think I talk just as a person too, I'm very rhythmic, uh, how I talk, my patterns and my sentences. So I think it's pretty easy for me to, to write that way. How do you write that way? I mean, how do you translate that onto a page when you, I don't know, <laughs> you just do it. I don't know. I know, uh, for me, when I, this is, and this is for any artistic form that I do, when I start thinking about it, I'm dead. Like I can read something and go, Oh God, what was I doing? I was thinking I'll read something else and go, I don't even remember writing that. You know, it's just that flow that comes through you. It, it's, it's fleeting. It's not always there. It's not there for me right now. Though, Cause I'm like, when I'm trying to write, but it's, um, you know, if you're kind of lucky enough, maybe, maybe you're channeling something that just needs to be expressed. And it just, comes out i always i always do this thing though <laughs> i know it. i do this sometimes so i write in coffee shops a lot and i'll have my computer and when i'm getting into it all i'm like like a seance my eyes like roll back in my head and i'm like and it's just like i'm i'm sure i look really crazy but i know i'm in it i'm like oh my god my eyes are rolling back in my head and i feel it and if someone's trying to talk about it, like it's like I guess, oh there oh, okay whoo and then i'm like oh shoot my hand wasn't on the right keyboard <laughs> it's no. all like jx and i'm like no no i remember kind of what it was but i think it's just it's like with anything, right? Whether you're running or you're dancing or you're singing or you're 
doing anything, playing a sport. It's like when you're in the zone, which is basically just what it is, sure. you know, you're, you're playing, you're like, Oh, I don't remember dribbling and setting up my shot and then flicking my wrist. You're just, you just doing it and you're running mm. to the next one. It's kind of the same thing when you're writing. Um, so I don't know if you're not a rhythmic person. That's a good question. Like, how do you, um, I think you have to hear it back. I think you have to write something and I think you need to hear different people read it and hear it. And I mean, when you listen to a music, when you listen to a song you like, right, you, you hear it and you're like, oh, I like that groove, you know, um, whether it's, whether it's a, a melodic type music or whether it's sharp and staccato, like, and maybe not the whole piece is like that. Maybe it's just one section. So but it's, I think it's important because audiences get bored of hearing the same rhythm too. They like to, they get bored. Do you, do you do that purposefully where it's like, okay, I, I know I'm at the same rhythm. I need to, I need to make some variations right now. And I, I need to be a little, I mean, do you, do you, are you thinking musically when you, while you do it? Like, okay, I, I know that I'm in this pattern, it's, but it's just it's just kind of always, it's always changing for you then, I guess. Um, I know it when I'm hearing it back. Yeah, not really while I'm writing, probably more when I'm editing. Yeah, I can feel like, oh, it's like an acting scene. It's like, oh, you're on the same tactic. Mm -hmm. It's getting dull. We, you, you need to s switch tactics. You're not getting what you want. It's kind of like the same thing, right? When you're doing a scene and you're like, what were you doing? Well, the whole time I was, I was trying to tell her oh, you're great. It's like, okay, well, it was really dull. Okay, that wasn't working. Then at some point you have to switch tactics. So it's kind of like that with writing too. But um, yeah, I think um, Dan and Paul was the one that I feel like I was doing that the most with because it was two characters. It's the, my longest play, which is 45 minutes. <laughs> Woo! I gotta get to, I gotta get to 90 one of these days. Um, most of my plays are on the shorter yeah. side. So that one, uh, yes, that one I was more aware of the rhythm because I had heard it so many times and I just knew that the whole thing was a dance literally like literally it was this dance between these two people and you know when you dance there's different styles you know there's a very slow dance then there's uh, a dance where one person's leading then maybe another person's leading then maybe they're both leading so yeah what's been your biggest obstacle to overcome when it, when it comes to playwriting, kind of being self-taught? Um, I, th well, at this point, it was trying to write something longer. I mean, I don't, I seem to have like a certain length where then I just feel, I don't intend to write a certain length. I just intend to write something and then whenever it feels like that's a good ending point, then it ends for me. I have with like with Dan and Paul, I it has been produced a lot, but it can't be a standalone piece because it's so short. Sure. Um, and I was like, gosh, I really want to extend it, but it's hard to figure out. You know, you don't want to extend just to extend. Um, so yeah, I think I think writing like a longer piece is is really challenging. What do you think is inhibiting you from? Well, I should say that because I'm writing a book now, so I guess that's a long piece. <laughs> fair, fair enough. But. Hundred and something pages. Yeah. Fair enough, but so, but what? What do you think it is as far as plays go? In what's preventing you from going longer, and how do you think you can over overcome that? Or what are you trying to? What are you trying to implement to overcome those things? Um. I think I wrote a book. I think that's my that was my way to overcome it. Okay. <laughs> it's just like you know what that format wasn't working. Let's write a long book, um, and that is something to be said because the book that I'm writing or that I completed really, I had I wanted to tell that story for so long, but it I tried to write it as a play and it just didn't work. Why do you think that is? Um, it just the way the way this story needs to be told needs to be told in a first person narrative and it needs to have 
a lot of description and it needs to be a detailed it but interesting enough I have lots of play sections in the book so I have sections that that feel like a play um and die a lot of dialogue moments do you break the fourth wall in your in any of your work mm -hmm. okay I'm just curious because like I, I as as you talk about this and then I, I think about different styles if you take like Nikki Silver, who has, you know, he has a lot of fourth wall breaking where a character's just going to, you know, do a monologue and talk about, you know, their point of view of the situation and things like that. And uh -huh. I think uh, Stephen Deeds does as well, with, mm -hmm. you know, not that, that there aren't other playwrights that do it. So I'm just wondering if, if you took that approach, if you couldn't accomplish the same thing by giving a little bit of narrative, if you will. Yeah. I mean, have you have you taken that approach? Maybe I I'm just I trying to think. You know. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, I have with my um, initial velocity that those two characters literally talk to the audience. So it's like two one woman shows or one person shows happening at the same time. Interesting. And they are finishing. I don't even know if she's about like they just finish each other's sentences, but they're talking to the audience, ex telling them about each other sure. and they spend the whole play like that in their own spaces, performing in their own spaces. And then they come together like the last five minutes of the play. But that's not the book, though. That's not the book. No. OK, I'm just no, no. curious. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to problem solve. <laughs> No, there's 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 no problem. I mean, I don't know. I guess every every play has its own problem, sure. you know. Um, but I don't know what it's so interesting about plays. I mean, play when I say a play, when I think of a play, I'm thinking of like the f production, the whole thing yeah. of it. You know what I mean? Not just the script, but you know, a script is just part of it. It's it's like you could have a really an amazing script, but then just have a really bad play. <laughs> you could have a really bad performance of it. You know what I mean? Or or opposite, you could have a not really, like on paper, it's not really that great a play, but you have some freaking amazing actors that sure. are just like bringing it to life, you know? So when I think of a, when I say a play, I, like, I'm envisioning like the whole thing, not just like the script. Do you think a lot of that comes from you being, being an actress? That, that to, to All of it, of, actor, writer, producer, yeah, director. And I think that's important as a playwright. I, I think if you are just a playwright, I think you're doing yourself a real disservice because ultimately your play, you want to see it on stage. So if you, not necessarily that while you're writing it, you see all the elements, but like, why not? Like envision like the lighting. I write all those in, you know, what the mood is like i feel like uh when you're telling any story that's the one of the most important things is just the mood of it right when you think about your audience because it's for them it's not for you like when you write something it's not for you it's for the audience to enjoy so think about it like oh as an audience member when i'm settling in my seat what do i want to see and hear and when the do i want the lights to come down slow do i want them to bump and be like whoa it's starting like I think it's really important to think of yourself how when you go to plays, how you experience them and then write, f I don't want to say write from an audience perspective, but, um, you know, yeah, I think it's important. What is there, is there a position? That's not the right word. I don't think. Is there a position in, in theater, whether that be a producer, director, actor scene scene designer is there one of those that you think would be most beneficial for a player to, to to jump into while they're learning to pl write plays what, what which one do you think is going to be the most i would say probably a director or an actor yeah yeah because i think um i just think it would give you a lot of insight to what happens hopefully after your play someone takes it and then it'll tell you also like were you clear enough with your play if your play is really clear on the page you should be able to handle it to hand it over to almost anybody and it 
you know, presented. So, so I think that is something we learn as we go along too, is like, oh, wow, I thought I was really clear with it, but I guess I was only clear in my own mind or my own, you know, group that knows me. And then once it got out of me doing it or someone I know doing it, maybe it wasn't as clear. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, I think especially if a playwright, um, yeah, I would say directing or acting for sure. I mean, I would, I would do both because, I mean, the thing about playwriting and just plays in general, it's such a collaborative art form. It's like no other. And that's why people love doing theater. So, you know, it's not like doing a film where, you know, your parts are kind of compartmentalized mm -hmm. and sure you work as a unit, but it's not totally collaborative. It's like the lighting department's got their people and this and this. It's like theater is just like, you know, you read through, it's like they're all there, the scenic design, they're showing you what the set's going to be. And so I think it's really good to imagine all of that when you're writing. I certainly don't, I don't mean to always repeat this question by any means, but it always comes up. Um, do you direct your own, have you directed your own work? I have. Yeah. I don't, I don't like directing. <laughs> I really don't. You don't like directing in general? You don't like directing your own work? So, Holiday Fever that you mentioned, I directed, I, I, I did, the reason why I don't do it anymore is because <laughs> I directed it, wrote it, produced it, styled all the wigs, did the costumes, choreographed it, did the music within it. Like, I did every single part of that, not, not really because I wanted to hoard, mm. but um, it was such a specific style, and most of it was choreography, and that's why I was like the kind of the choreographer was the director so i did do both but i don't know i i i i like someone else doing it because it's you're able to step back a little bit more and just enjoy it when you're in it and you're directing your own work it's just it's a lot and i don't think it's very enjoyable or at least i didn't really enjoy it has have you let anybody else direct holiday fever no, no, that was my show that I created, and um, I haven't, I haven't done it, and probably won't do it again. Why not? It brought people so much joy, but also brought me so much stress that it just, it, you know. But anyway, but yes, but I did, I did do all those parts, and it's just a lot. Sometimes you kind of just want to. It's almost like sometimes an actor, you just want to like, you don't want to produce, do you even have things to do all the time. You just want to walk in and put on your costume and go perform and truth. then leave at the end of the night. You know how that is. Mm. Yeah. And, and it's nice sometimes when someone else is <laughs> stressed out and you're like, well, all I have to do is remember my lines. Exactly. Well, put mm -hmm. on my dress. <laughs> and then at the end of the night, you know, put my props away and leave. You know, I don't have to go, oh gosh, we don't have an audience for tomorrow. Let me get on the, let me get on social media and try to get it. And you know, it's, it's nice. Sure. And that's, and that's why I'm asking about letting go. I mean, for, for such a successful show and having a history behind it, why not let go of the reins and say, here you go, put it out into the world and, and, and put it on new play exchange and say, run with it it's Go. definitely not that it's not a play so it's 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 co completely choreography based sure. so for that i would want to keep all that intact and you know it you know if you just be honest it's just a lot of freaking work and it would take a lot of work to even just figure out what's retaining of it because it it was such a it was such a thing that was created by me for just sure. I don't know. Yeah, it's different than just like a play. Like, here's the script. Go do it. Like, it's really a work. But but I like other people. I, I've enjoyed working with, with other people, um, mm -hmm. directing things, and uh, sometimes just going in and showing up. Oh, my gosh, you did such a great job. And um, it's always nice to hear people who are enjoy doing your work. Sure. That's really fun. Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about the submission process since mm -hmm. you since you've talked about being all over the world where did you start the process like okay this is where i'm this is where i'm gonna look for the opportunities yeah this is what i'm going to write in the submission letter and what what have been your successes and failures in that regard yeah um 
Playwright Center. I think that's what it is. Yeah, Playwright Center. It is a paying thing, but that's in literally... In Minnesota, right? Uh, I don't know where they're based. I okay. think they are. Yeah, it's an online yeah. thing. Yeah. I literally, all my submissions, I went through there. Really? Okay. Yeah. And um, I am definitely not the norm, but I... I rarely <laughs> had rejections, so I'm definitely not the norm. I got very lucky and had just a lot of, I think, and I can say it from just a, not I'm like, it was really good work, but it, I know it was good work because it had been workshopped and I had mm -hmm. seen the reaction from the audiences. So I was like, oh, these are good plays, but um, super easy process. You just, um, it tells you the parameters of what they're looking for. Um, I don't have five minute plays and I don't have shows that are over an hour. So mine are about 15 to 45 minutes. Uh, you look for whatever they're looking for. You send the script and they email you and say, we'd like to, you know, include you in this festival or, or we'd like to produce your show. It's, it's pretty easy. None of them, um, maybe a couple of them required like letters, but most of it, it was just the script. Um, that was it, it's easy so i would recommend that place and, and the playwright center that's just that's not that's just the hub where other festivals might like hey i'm, exactly. pu I'm putting my we're putting our festival on playwright center mm -hmm. take a look and, and run oh it's great yeah okay. it's uh, it's i had plays done in ireland and you know uh, everywhere but yeah it's it's a hub it's just like the it's basically like the breakdowns but for for playwriting and I personally wouldn't recommend spending. Uh, there are some that do cost to uh, mm -hmm. send it submissions. The only one I ever submitted to that I paid for was they the winner got a thousand dollars, and I was like, well, you know, twenty five to win a thousand, let's do it. Twenty five dollars for a four week production. Or even a two-week production. Oh, it was or just a, a thousand, festival. Right. No, yeah, I know. Oh, I know. Off. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I know. I yeah. know. But $25, this is a, this is a pick your poison. $25 for a two-week production or $25 to win $1,000? Which one? Wait, say it again. $25. $25 for a two-week production. Uh-huh. If you get in or $25 for $1,000. I think it depends. <clears throat> it depends on the play and, and what you want out of it. I mean, for me, most of the things that I was sending to, I had had seen them already in a workshop form. So I kind of felt, I don't want to say I felt complete with it, but you know, when you, when you haven't had a chance to see it at all, even in a workshop form, you, you're itching, right? Oh God, I just want to see this play done. Someone, I just want someone to do it so I can be in an audience and, you know, watch my work. Um, I had kind of had that already. So I was just for that particular prelay, I was like, well, I've already had that really awesome experience of being able to be an audience member already. So, hey, if they want to do it and um, Lake Tahoe people want to come see it and I win a thousand dollars, let's let's send that play. So I just picked a specific play that I had already because, oh, because that one they you could have had it produced before. Some of them, that's what happens a lot. They'll say like, you know, um, First time world production premiere, only yeah. world premiere. Yeah, I know, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. So in that regard, before you start sending it out, do you do you recommend that playwrights, before they just start submitting work out there into the world, to go ahead and, like, have it workshopped, have it not necessarily produced, or at least a table read, a stage reading, something, just to hear that reaction and make sure that it works in there, in, you know? I think so. I think, um, I don't know. I think it's really important to have like a, just a network of, of people, either whether it's a writing group or people that you trust and their work is really good that you can learn from. Um, because I think what can happen is maybe your play does work, but it's just not right for certain festivals. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you keep getting, you're like, wow, no one's, I'm sending all these out. No one's reaching back out and my work must be really bad and it's like well it's not really a good or bad thing sometimes sometimes it's also like is your work right for a certain place um which is also good to know like you should always look at the submission but then also go on the website see what kind of plays they produce and if they produce you know every year like annie and you know 
our town and like you have a really edgy political piece it's like well it's probably it's probably not for them you right. know so it's it's good to do that just to save yourself the the um sadness of <laughs> kind of pushing the send button and not getting any emails back um which could be that yeah maybe it's not resonating with anyone or it could just be it's a particular piece that maybe is best produced in a certain area or you know at certain theaters that aren't looking for submissions online yeah i mean not to be did at horse because this has also come up in many conversations as well but even like play noir mm -hmm. how many non-noir pieces that we'd oh, get God. you know oh, and no. i'd read all the way to the end and like oh you know, you're such a nice person I, I, <laughs> have to. The end. I have to because you never know when that twist is going to come true you know and, and it's just like oh my god oh. there was one and forgive me if well actually don't forgive me if you're listening or watching this because <laughs> If you, if this is you, you should know better. It was a, it was a, it was a play by play commentary of a world cup championship oh. between two. And it was the commentators. It was, it was the, the, the announcers commenting about what they're watching off screen. And I'm like, I think it was 55 pages and there was a couple of Benny Hill moments Dang, where like longer than the whole festival length that it was supposed to be. Was, you could only done that one play. <laughs> and, oh boy. And Yikes. it was, and mm -hmm, I read the whole thing. Oh wow. And, and that was because again, if they're, if they're willing to take the time to write something and submit it, then I at least owe them. You know what? You're nicer than me because, <laughs> well, I don't want to say nicer than me, but like, I think, and this goes for whatever you're going to do in the art form. This is such a hard business and you call it a business. Cause if you, unless this is just something that, you know, you, uh, you're just doing in your basement cause you're bored, you know, like if you really want to have work done and not there, like you have to do your homework, right? You have to know, um, you have to see plays, you have to read plays. I don't, I just don't think it's worth it to I like I look at that and I'm like you have to know what you're submitting for you know because it's also um not it's also okay I just feel like it's kind of disrespectful to like you to in your festival like you have to be thinking of just I don't know I just feel like and maybe they don't know any better so but still if if you want to write you should try to know better by just educating yourself as, as much as possible because it's it's hard no, I agree. And I think, I think the mentality is there's that I think I have a really good piece and if it, it, it's so good that it doesn't matter what, what the festival is, they're going to love it and they're going to put it in. They're going to put it in. Yeah. But that's not really that's, how it works. No. I mean, like, like noir is really specific. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Don't do that. And I don't, I don't think in as much as I love noir, I don't think that people are as familiar with it as they, they, they think, I don't think they, I don't think, hmm, it's a very underappreciated genre and I don't think that people really know what it is, Yeah, you know. Um, well, actors do it too, like they'll just, they'll see a breakdown looking, you know, me, looking for male uh, african-american six five you must be over six five and then like a lady who like will submit like me you're like you're just a blind you're just mm -hmm. you know you know <laughs> like no like read it and it's, save yourself the time to like there's so many submissions on there like like i said that isn't going to happen you know if a, if a play is like looking for christian you know based work and you send something that's really risque, like they're not going to read that and be like, oh my gosh, this was so great. Maybe we'll change our festival around to fit this in. No, like they're going to be like annoyed and not read it. So yeah, save yourself the time too uh, before submitting to these places, you know? Are there resources out there like maybe the Playwright Center um, or any others that you belong to that you find... Um, that are really helpful and, and, and beneficial to your playwriting. Like I know that Playwright Center does workshops mm -hmm. and I don't know if you've attended any of those or if there's any other platforms or, or groups out there that you're a part of that 
maybe people don't know about that you would recommend to either improve your writing, network, learn about the business? My gosh. Well, I guess it depends where you where you live, but oh, sure, there are... Sure. But nowadays... Um, with, there's, con- yeah. there's tons of, I mean, there's Facebook writing groups. There sure. Are, my only thing about like all these groups, I would just say, is when you're starting out, go to a few, and like you want to be, it's like it's like a house, right? You want to have like it's okay to have like the worst house as long as it's in a great neighborhood. Like you know, it's okay if you're starting out and you don't really know what you're doing, but like make sure there's people there because they're going to be the people giving you feedback, like that are good. Like you want to be or surround yourself by good. And also, um, some of these groups can be really negative. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. So don't do that. <laughs> like, yeah. find yourself with a group um, that's very supportive. Not someone's going to lie to you. Sure. But, but, but you know, that's going to give you really good feedback. Uh, the group we were in for a long time, mm-hmm. we had the rule that uh, after you hear the play, the playwright um, w- wasn't allowed to say anything. Um, we just had to listen to the feedback, which is a really great way of not being defensive because you could, there's people that couldn't do it. So you just say, I didn't understand. So the feedback, I'm good. I, I didn't understand, um, why the lady was so angry. Well, oh, it's because you, it's like, you listen, just sit and listen to all of it and take it in. doesn't mean you have to take everybody's right. changes, but it's it's good to take it in, and then as the people giving the feedback, we had to always lead with something positive. Um, yeah, sure. So I think something like that. So I don't have any specific groups to throw out there. Like I said, the 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 Playwright Center is where I did all my submissions, and then New Play Exchange is a good place um, when you do get to a point where you have a body of work. It's it's like IMDb, but like for plays, and I I've had a lot of people reach out from there as well. Um, whether it's just to use a monologue of mine for for um, in a college setting or produce or whatever, that's a good place to to also read other people's work and and meet people. A lot of times, people just randomly will read your plays and then write a review, and you're like, oh wow, that's so nice. And then you reach out to them and read some of their work, and you know, and it's a pretty supportive environment. Well, they have, they have a um, we'll call it a regulation it sounds so strict, but they also have like. Um, a requirement to know not the best word that you, you cannot criticize that it's all it's coming from a positive place and a supportive place mm-hmm. rather than it's like hey yeah. your play kind of sucks yeah. yeah yeah um do you represent yourself mm-hmm. and how like when somebody comes in and they want to license your work mm-hmm. how do you approach that Great question. I have a friend that I always reach out to that has had his plays, a lot of his plays produced, and I always ask him because I'm always like, whoa, I don't know. <laughs> what do we do? And he usually walks me through and say, well, how big's the audience? How long do they want to run it for? You know, and then you also have to say, like, you know, it's not going to be a big bonanza anyway. And so, you know, sometimes if you really want the experience of seeing your work up, you know, it's, you know, you work with it. Yeah. Have you found that you have plays that were produced without your permission? That oh, hey, oh, oh, not yet. Oh. Gosh, I, I, oh, no, I'm nervous. Let's <laughs> 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 go get out there and start googling. Well, you know, we've had playwrights that that have that have come on that that set Google alerts. Oh wow! To where if they. Oh, you know, do that. there's one, yeah, there's one playwright who's, hang on, <laughs> <laughs> there's one playwright, she specifically, I think, I think it was Susan Goodell, who she specifically uses, not obscure, but just not uncommon titles to set her Google alerts. So to where it's not going to be like something like, you know, um, froggies, you know, to where if, huh. you know, somebody Google's froggies, if you're not going to get this whole list of things, they're going to, if you like, you know, um, Paul and Deanna, maybe that, you know, is obscure enough to where, oh, oh, I just found out that my play was done in, in huh. Salt Lake City, Utah. Interesting. 
So, I mean, right. you know, think no, about I it. No, I have not yet. I mean, I even had like a young girl reach out through New Plays Exchange and say, oh, I love this model. Like, can I use it for um, my acting class in college? So I was like, and I was like, I don't even know if she had to ask permission, but I was like, sure, absolutely. Oh, well, at least but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get that Google alert going. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that many plays. I'm not that worried about it, you know, but good, good thing. I know that you adapted Dalton into a, sh- into a short. Mm-hmm. Now, just in case somebody wants to, just from, from going from stage to screen were there were the things that changed did you were there you know completely different piece in what aspect how so the whole thing one was a play one was a film that is definitely not my forte (laughs) i like to talk um wow yeah it was oh that was really hard to figure out because what worked on stage didn't wouldn't work in a film it was two different mediums. You know, one was meant to be seen almost like a sitcom live. That's how it was mm-hmm. presented. And then the other was still, you know, it was it was a film. I mean, it's still mainly dialogue based. It wasn't like, you know, a film where it was just, you know, just tons of visuals the whole time. It was still, you know, bantery. But so much of it changed. And I think um, the biggest thing was I thought like, oh, man, it's not as funny it's not as funny as a film, but it's just different. It was just different. Like in, in person, it was like a Lucille ball episode. So it was just broad and, you know, and then, um, we just had to turn it into something different, you know, you added a character, if I'm not mistaken, into the film version of him or a couple characters. It was like, it it was Dalton. So, so it was like the, our potential son, we had, um, had like the two different versions we just had him like pop up as an adult like what they would be so it's just like a brief moment um would that have worked on stage no i mean it could but you'd have to read you'd have to write a whole different thing like yeah i mean plays are so much my thing just from doing them for so long and so i understand the pacing Mm. where film you know i don't it's it's an editing thing. Right. I mean, I get it when it's done, I'm able to say like, oh, that's too slow. It, it needs to go fine to the, the, but not that, that didn't, that wasn't proper language. Da, 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 <laughs> da. Uh, but it's just not my, I'm just not as practiced at it. Sure. You know, and I don't really enjoy the process as much as on stage. It's fun to rehearse like in a theater. Right. It's fun. Did you, coming from, a Hollywood background because you did a lot, you've done a lot of screen Mm -hmm. time, small and and big. Mm -hmm. Did you fall into that trap as a playwright where you, when you started writing plays where it was like, you know, a quick little scene in one location and then all of a sudden we're in another location. Mm -hmm. I find, no. Okay. Why do you think that is? I mean, I find that with a lot of beginning playwrights, they write as if it's a movie. Oh, really? Or, oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like no. quick little snip. It's like, you know, 13 different locations, oh, you know, geez. quick little snippets of dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> they just, they might not, they, they, I guess they don't want their plays to be produced ever. <laughs> I don't intentionally, like, I guess how I write is almost like a low budget movie where they're like, it's gotta be all in one place. Um, no, all my plays take place. Dalton takes place in a bedroom. Uh, uh, my other plays take place in a park. It's like minimal. You don't need anything. The other takes place in a diner. It's, they don't go anywhere. I mean, I think that's, yeah, that's, you're di- doing yourself a disservice because you're also not the, I don't know. It's sort of one of those things like you don't, you kind of don't want to be thinking while you're writing it. Ooh, let me make sure I don't. You don't want to stop your imagination, right? You don't want to like stop your imagination and go, ooh, if I ever want this play to be done, oh, I can't have all these effects and all these, this big set, it needs a mansion and all, you know, all these things. It's like, you don't want to stop your creativity. But, you know, at the end of the day, you also have to, if you do want it to get to produced, to, to produced, um, you know, someone's probably not going to want to do a big budget thing unless you're at the taper or something like that. So, but you don't want to stop yourself too. 
but it's something maybe you want to think about maybe when you get into a group that might be feedback they would say hey have you ever thought of like streamlining it and putting it in so it's it's just an easier play to produce and put on that you could do it anywhere you could do it in a black box you could do it at a big theater you know you don't need a whole lot do you say just write it first just get it all out yeah, and just then it adjust first. it yeah yeah, yeah. cuz also said you don't want to stop your imagination because you know as they say writing is rewriting and off, oftentimes you may write something and maybe that doesn't end up going anywhere in this play but you use a section of it in another play that you're doing or that sparks oh wait no 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 not a mansion oh my gosh it's going to be okay it's not going to be in a mansion. It's the man, like, uh, you know what I mean? It just, sure. your mind leads somewhere else and it takes you to a whole other place. When do those things, when do you, th do, when do those things happen for you? And then like, how do you, when do those moments happen? Do they happen in the editing process? And, and are they just the magical moments that just kind of occur and you don't even realize it? Like, oh my gosh, or what? How do you prepare for those? Or do you, do you just not, they just happen? Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can. I mean, maybe, look, maybe some people can, maybe, maybe people that like write and have a million plays prepare for it. I don't know. I have, I, I, I have quality, quality over quantity. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know how you prepare for those things, I, but I think you have to be open. I guess maybe my first drafts have a, a lot going on. Sure. Like they, I think just in general yeah probably my things just a lot and then it becomes more and more focused as it goes on like well, yeah but, as far as like the writing as far as like the editing editing out of it sure but yeah. i mean do you go through when you go through your editing are you looking like for those moments where changes can occur or do they just kind of manifest themselves in the moment when you're rereading like Oh, this all of a sudden it clicks. Oh, not the mansion, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the guest house behind it, mm -hmm. you know. I think for me, most of the, uh, what I need to fix comes when it's up on its feet. So if I'm hearing it read or seeing just like a, a stage reading something, I'm just, I, it, it's very clear to me, like, what isn't working and what is working. How detailed do you go into st with stage directions? How much detail do you put? Or are you pretty um, just? Uh, I, for me, stage direction serves its purpose for the music. So sometimes with my play, if um, if they're reading it, it almost serves like beats. So where it's like, I know that there's gonna be some space here and that would be happening in the directing of it, right? I could see like maybe there's, you know, like in Deanna Paul, there's a lot of space that has to happen. And I always know when there's a good director and they say, oh, there's your your piece has a lot of room for space. And I said, oh, I'm so glad. So sometimes I put the stage direction in there to kind of serve as the space where it would be if it's up on its feet. But if there wasn't anything there, it might just seem like disjointed if that makes sense describe describe that describe space in the context of like a play and either the page or the or the or the stage what, what does that mean in, in in that realm so almost like transitions some sometimes if i feel like any it's they serve as just like a little bit of a, a, a like a little transition so sometimes you could do that and just be like you know there's a, a couple beats and then he crosses, you know, to the next room. Sometimes that might be enough. Um, in that particular piece that I was speaking of, it had a lot of music. Mm -hmm. And so when I knew when it was going to be done up on its feet, there probably needed to be a lot of space there. But I thought, well, I can't just put he walks across the room because it seemed too um, abrupt going mm -hmm. from that line to that line. So I just, you know, he walks across, I just, just gave a little bit more description about how he walked and what, you know, what his hand did when he moved across the, put it across the record players, something just to give like a, the feel of it. Okay. Yeah. I seem to remember cause I remember cause it takes place in a cafe if I'm not mistaken. Right. I have like a lot of different versions that one. Okay. Yeah. 
but she's a she's a waitress, if I'm not mistaken, but, correct? Yeah, you probably saw like the shorter version. I I believe so. Yeah. But I the one thing that I seem to remember it was wasn't just a musical. It was it was a little bit of a dance as well. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Is that another aspect of theater that you recommend people? Even if you are just a person who works at Walmart, you should take a dance class. My feeling is if, if everyone in the world danced, people would be less angry and they would be more open. They would be more like to me, dancing out of every single art form is the most expressive Um because because uh, you don't have words, you don't need words, and it's just like uh, it, it's the best. I mean, I, I feel like uh, I'm always surprised actually for actors why a lot a lot of people don't have a lot of don't know what to do with their body a lot of times, and I'm almost like, oh wow, like you know, you should really take like a dance class. Um, it's just a great way to express yourself. It opens people up. Um, the difference one feels from when they go into a class to at the end, you know, you feel like you've, you feel closer to yourself and you just, I don't know. I just feel like people are happier when they dance. What, what f- form of dance would you recommend then when you sit? Form. Okay. Yeah. I feel like just music and moving, you know, not yoga, that's like static and that's just a whole different, but like moving freely, um, any kind of music, whether it's like salsa or just like a Zumba class or just j- jumping around your room with your kids and doing a dance. I mean, it's just, it's, it makes people happy. And, um, uh, it's, it's, you know, you get great ideas for plays or think when you're moving, I mean, so many of my things I work out when I'm walking, you know, I'll go for a long walk and I'm thinking through and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh, I got an idea, I got an idea. When I sit, you know, you're, you're stuck, sure. you're stuck up here, but when you move, you're not thinking. So that's why it's, it's really helpful for an artist to, to do some sort of movement. Because if you sit at your computer and you just, ah, ah, you're in your head, you're struggling, ah, you're not going to come up with anything. How do you prevent the loss of, of ideas when you're out for a walk? And all of a sudden that idea pops in your head because we're forgetful. And oh, we I might have my gr- phone. I, I, I use my voice. Okay. I go, oh my God, the story about uh, this lady's da, 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 da. And then, and then usually, and then I'll walk and then I'm like, you get so many when you're walking. So I would say like, if you get stuck, get away from the computer. You're not going to come up with anything, no matter how hard you try. <laughs> go for a walk. Don't try to think of anything and just walk fast and you'll probably, you know, your mind will free up a little bit. How has dancing helped your, your writing? I feel like, uh, well, I always use a dance element in all my writing or a physical. My, my, all my plays are extremely physical. How, um, how so? And then how do you put that on the page? So stay is about uh, um, a friendship between two dogs. So they're not like, dogs on all fours and i write that that's another thing that you write that very clearly on the front edge on the front page that this this is to be performed as two actors upright with just suggested elements costume wise of of maybe their particular breed because it's very specific Mm -hmm. the the description of them one is a um 13 year old german shepherd who has cancer Mm -hmm. and the other uh, sterling uh, played that role when we did the workshop. Um, and then the other is a three-year-old uh, Maltese mix. So um, she's like wiry and fun and young. And he's, um, so the play takes place where um, they're at a park and they used to meet every day and he hasn't been there in a while. And it's because he has cancer. And this was basically, oh my God, every time I start talking about it, I'm like, <laughs> let's, I'm pause. Get uh, let's pause for a minute. Um, it's his, his uh, um, person brought him to the park today f- mm. to just sit in the sun one last time. That's awesome. Uh, I wish y'all changed the so, subject. I know. Yeah. And it's so, I feel corny when I cry about it because I'm like, I'm crying about my own play, but no. I'm not. Like, no. I'm so distanced. Dist- sure. Oh my God, when I, I'd be like, <laughs> like crying. But um, yeah, so it's, it's a story about friendship. And um, sure. so it's very physical because he has to be very 
physical because she's like what's wrong your hips you know because he's trying to sit and he's mm. uncomfortable and then she's really physical like you want to let's go let's run around the tree let's go you want to go you know Remi- the red ball you know reminds me of, of and this has come up in conversation so much like the old the old warner brothers looney tunes come on strike strike we're gonna play yeah, ball music. Exactly. Ah, shut up yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so that one's very physical and you you do have to write that out and um so my other play initial velocity that's the one with the two people that are it's essentially that is literally almost like a musical where you are not you are doing the musical with that person but you're never looking at them the whole thing is like a running poem literally it's these two runners that are in a park they're madly in love with each other but they've never spoken ever and the whole thing is just this whole dream that they both have about each other um and it even involves into a tango at one point so it's super physical um and then dan and paul is also (sighs) has a dance at the end is physical but it's more of an emotional dance um but then it also turns into a a physical like dance at the end so i don't know i feel like audiences really like to watch um that's another just pointer in general for playwrights any opportunity you get uh to where people are just moving sure (laughs) audiences love to watch um movement it's it's it breaks up um dialogue it's it's just helps them stay attentive you know stay attentive so do you know you're writing a dance when you when when while you're doing it? Um, well, for the running piece, I did because they were they are literally runners, like figuratively, emotionally, and they're like physically sure. runners. So I knew that I was going to have this whole staging thing. Um, I think I probably just innately write like that, just because dance is still such a huge, you know, part of my life. It's 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 brings me so much joy more than anything, more than writing or anything. I mean, I don't know if writing really, I don't know. Writing is hard. I don't know very, I don't love to write. (laughs) Let's let's just be honest. I don't know if, I don't love to write. Writing is hard. I love when something turns out well. Sure. And audiences enjoy it. But writing, it's, no, it's not like, oh, I cannot wait to write. I'm so excited. (laughs) Well, (laughs) you just, that was, you just kind of ran into my next transition. So it's it's a great, um, segue because, I was just about to say, going back when we first started this conversation, you called yourself a lazy writer. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome that? And how do you, how do you, how do you force yourself to finish a piece? I think it helps if you're in a group. And I think it helps if you have just someone else. It's like having a workout partner. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if I can't force myself to go to the gym, well, if I have that class or I'm paying that trainer. So I think that helps. Um, I also think it helps when you get some positive reaction to something. Sometimes that's honestly what keeps me going is like, for instance, this book, like I'm like, oh my God, I just got to. I got to get it out there because I've had enough people read it that have really loved it. So sometimes that's what keeps me going, not myself. Like to me, I'm kind of like, but I'm like, well, you know, people really need it and they really liked it. So I should do it for them and try to complete it. Well, isn't that the flow of things? Like when you really start getting into that rhythm and it starts to happen, all of a sudden it's like all the ideas start to. It's a muscle. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like going back to the gym. It's like, If you've been out of the gym, like I have (laughs) since COVID, you know, I don't want to go. And then it's hard. You go back and you're like, oh my gosh, this is only two pounds. I'm like, oh, I can barely move. And it just feels like a struggle and it's depressing. And you think, oh, how far have I, I've gotten so far gone. I'll never get it back. And then you keep going and going and going. And then suddenly it's like, wow, I think I can bump up to five, you know. So it's the same. It's, it's it's just like anything. You just have to do it, whatever that means to you. Some people do, well, I do my morning pages. Some people are like, yeah, just, I don't know. Maybe you want to read something. Maybe that inspires you. Or seeing, some. Uh, for me, sometimes when I see productions, mm-hmm. I go, oh, yeah. I forgot how cool it is to put on a play. I got to get back to writing. Right, right. So I think that helps. You, get, you can just get outside of your, your own thoughts. Is it the support or is it the accountability? 
Um, or both. It's both. Okay. Yeah. It depends on your own personality. Like if you don't, if you're a person that isn't, it, it has a hard time focusing or, or giving yourself accountability, having a group and seeing other people put things up or say, you know, you, you're on the roster for, you know, you're, you're supposed to put up work next week. Do you have anything? Um, that's helpful, but it's, it depends what you need. Uh, you know, you mentioned, um, having a lot of success in submissions. Mm -hmm. Were there, re were there rejections that you received? And if so, how did you deal with those? Or have you just been that no, good and lucky? You know what? I, I know I actually, I had a lot, I, I just had a lot of luck early on with, with my plays and I shouldn't say just luck. I mean, I, I worked, I think if I hadn't had my workshop, I mean, the Dan and Paul, I mean, I worked on that for like at least three years mm -hmm. and I have, so, oh my gosh, I have so many variations. I have one that is narrative where she's telling the story. I mean, so many different, um, what do you call it? Uh, devices that I was playing around with, like what works. One thing was literally almost all monologues, you know, and I saw that version and that doesn't work. So I had worked really, really hard on those plays uh, before I submitted them. So they were, they were very ready to go out. They were ready for productions. Um, and I, th and then I, I think I got lucky in the sense, uh, creatively lucky that I just was able to channel some, some things into those plays that were very universal themes that resonated. So that's why I think they had like larger appeal because, you know, who, who hasn't dealt with grief, you know, who hasn't had their heart broken. So they're very, like, my play is a very um, universal theme. So sure. there's not like, you know, challenging to well, I mean, I think that, produced. Uh, sure. I think that there's a lot to be said about that because you, you're writing, you're writing pieces that are relatable and how, how important do you think that that, that is opposed to writing something that's, I want to say personal because personal can be relatable, mm -hmm. but, and I'm not to, I'm not trying to say that you can't write for yourself and I think you should write for yourself. And most of the time I think we do. But going back to what you said earlier about, you know, writing for your audience, I think mm -hmm. there's got to be a good balance. Definitely. So do you think that, I mean, how important is relatability when it comes to success? Do you think that that's, that's what... very important. I mean, again, it depends on what kind of voice you have and what, what your themes are and what, what you write about. But I've, I've seen work that is good work but is so personal that it lacks it's still a performance, you know what I mean? Like it's where it gets so self-involved that it's like, okay, your audience is not going to want to sit through this. And that's where a group is helpful to just say like, Hey, I, you know, sometimes you can get, people can get so in love with their work mm. because it's so personal, mm. but then you also have to re remember that it's uh, it's still a play. Sure. Um, and yeah, but I, you know, I don't know. I think, not everyone has to have relatable, you know, it depends on what you write, you know, there's, there's things that are, maybe I'll see that I'm like, oh, I, I can't really relate to that, but that was cool. It was a cool play. I liked that, you know, um, it's just like anything, you know, whatever you gravitate towards, but, but it's important to always take a step back and say, oh, am I being so self-involved with my own feelings here in this personal thing that I'm forgetting that there's an entertainment aspect and I don't mean entertain, you know, it's, sure. it's an entertainment, you know, it's for entertaining right. too, for, to take people on a journey. Um, so that's important to remember. You, you've mentioned it, it's come up in episodes in the past as well. I'm not quite sure that we really kind of defined it, but you talked about finding your voice. What do you mm -hmm. think that is? What is, what is that? What is one's voice and what is yours and how did you find that that is a really i feel like that's another one of those very just ethereal but kind sure. of not um i mean think of think of people that you know in your life there are some people that are just like very specific people and have like or actors and you're like they're oh my god they're they do that thing 
uh, you know, it's like, I don't know what that is. Um, I think a lot of it is you have to really know yourself. I think it probably starts there. I think, I think, um, you know, maybe you're a horrible person. Maybe that, and so your voice will be horrible and, and that can be very engaging and entertaining. You know what I mean? I think it just comes from like just really knowing yourself and, you know, and not trying to be a certain way. It's like, so I do photography as well. A lot of times, you know, I have actors and it's like, well, I need what I want to do. A, I should have a real smiley picture for one, you know, and I'll be looking at these people and I go, I have to ask you something. Do you smile in real life? Because I've been talking to you for an hour and I've never seen your teeth. They're like, no, no, I'm not a smiler. And I'm like, well, then we're not going to take a smiley picture because you are you like, you're kind of an like ornery dude with like a beard and you're like this. So like, why are you going to be like, you know what I mean? So it's kind of the same thing. It's kind of like a voice thing too. It's like, I could try to write like a David Mamet type play, but like, it's probably not going to be very good because it's just going to just be like, well, so he's just cussing. It's really stupid. <laughs> just as like, maybe someone could try to write like some, silly funny thing like and that's just not their thing they're like edgy like political I don't know so I think you have to know who you are as an as an artist in general that doesn't matter if you're a a singer or a playwright and then what's your style and just do that that was my next question are voice and style one and the same I think they're a little different okay. yeah because I have I, I think a lot of people have a particular voice, but then can put that voice into different styles. Like for instance, noir to me is a style. Sure. So like I can write a noir play, but I also can write that same thing in a comedy. So with a style, right. it's like with dance, like you start out doing ballet, everyone should do ballet first because that's the foundation. But a ballet dancer, if you can get into the style, you can know how to do hip hop you can do Latin. They, they're just different. They're different ways to present it, but it comes from the same base. So if you're a good writer and you've got a voice, you can, um, I don't think of like a, I don't think of Brad Pitt. He's got a style as an actor. Sometimes he's like that in drama. Sometimes he's like that in comedies. I don't know. He just came to mind cause Babylon's coming out, but you know, I would say he has a style, Sure. you know, and it's just, it fits in different, types of pieces mm. um so same with writing yeah but i think finding your voice is um and sometimes that voice changes sure just as you you know i don't know i feel like i'm not as funny as i used to be after covid i was like <laughs> i'm just you know i don't think anyone's the same after covid sure um you know i don't know and it's okay you just never want to force anything because then it's just not People, I think that's what it is. I think people resonate with something that's authentic, mm -hmm. whether it's a performance or a piece of writing, and they recognize like that. And when you're trying to do something, they they feel that too. And um, I don't know. You mentioned devices in Dan and Paul. Are there devices that you that you routinely use or you come back to, or does it just vary on the piece? I think it varies on the piece. Um, I do love little monologues. I do love monologues because, you know, you can't really do this on film. I mean, you can, but, you know, in theater, boy, you could just all of a sudden <laughs> go to black and a person steps out and does a monologue. And it's like, oh, that's so exciting. And you can just talk about whatever. So I do love, um, I do enjoy monologues. When is it time for a monologue in a piece? Every two minutes. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> every two minutes do a monologue um i feel like the same way i feel about monologues is how if they're done well is where they put songs in musicals they always say like the person sang because they ran out of words to be able to express how they're feeling and had to sing it so it's kind of the same with a monologue it's just like something was going and going and going and then the only way to they could get it out was just to go into a monologue so sometimes they break up the rhythm though too because i've i've had to like kill tons of monologues and things where i'm like 
oh, I love that monologue, but <laughs> it just does not work. It's just like, Rrr. so it's about the rhythm too. Because if, if an audience is really captivated in like a scene and then a person steps out and starts talking, they're like, oh, I was really into, oh, why is he talking? Okay, I was into what was happening. So you'll get that feedback in, in workshops too that's very helpful or you'll just feel it. What makes a good monologue? Hmm, oh, good question. Um, I think... For me, anyway, when I use this monologue, it's more of someone expressing what they wish they could have expressed to somebody. So very um, raw emotion, just almost confessing what, you know, thoughts and feelings. Um, so I think something that that goes against like what that person, how that person was, is in a scene and then maybe almost like expressing a little bit and, and kind of something that's non-linear. I love a non-linear um, monologue because that's how people talk, right? You know, I think sometimes when we write monologues, we think it has to be, um, I like when it's active. So it's not like telling a past story, but it's right. like something happening. But I also love, because just like now, I lost my train of thought, you know, like we talk, but then we, um, I think I might get Thai food tonight. But what makes a good one? You don't like that. Sure. It's just like those, I think those things are just like Small people tangents. recognize like, oh yeah, that's how I think too, you know? Sure. So I think something, something unexpected, um, you know, just it's like, whoa, <laughs> I was going to say that. That's cool. Right. And then something that also still moves the story along. That's also hard is like sometimes they can make things come to a halt, but if they're used in a way that's kind of interesting, uh, and also thinking of lighting and things like how, where, where is that going to take place? Is something going to change? When is that like a, like, Oh, we're in a different realm now where he's doing his monologue. Are they still on the scene together? So you can have a lot of fun, I think with, with monologues being a little creative with them. Cause they can go anywhere. What are you working on right now? If anything, it's so funny when I say I'm working on this book, sometimes that's just me thinking about like that I need to work on it. I'd say <laughs> I'm serious. I'm like, I keep saying I'm working on this book, but most of the time the days go by. I'm like, I gotta work on that book, but I have, I, I, I have to finish. I mean, it, here's yeah. the thing. It yeah. is finished. I'm, I've never had a book published. I've never tried to have a book published, but I'm also thinking like a publisher. So my thing with it, is it long enough for a publisher, are they going to be like, this is this is not long enough that we could publish this? So I'm trying to think about those things, which is you know more of the um, the business side of it. So that's kind of where I'm at now. But I think I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm thinking like I might just just start sending it out because the thing with writing a book is it's not a play, so it is meant to be read. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know people do you know, audible books, but it's meant to be read. So I can't grab actors and say, can you read this for me? I want to see what works. And it's also not meant mm -hmm. to have like, um, the same, the, I think this, sorry, the same way, like a play would have an arc, you know, they're meant to sit down and watch it sure. in one sitting, not like, Oh, pick it up and put it back down. So it's been hard for me to, cause I think so much in pacing. Sure. Oh, cliffhanger, you know, mm -hmm. but the people I have, given it to us and I read it in one sitting it was so fun I was like oh is that a good thing or I don't know how publisher was like we don't want people to watch and listen to one sitting that's too short um so that that's I think that's what I gotta do is just send it out and I don't know talking about lazy like it's oh, it just sounds sounds so awful because there's not I'm sure they're like new play exchange has the list you know you have to like google like who likes women comic books, comedy books and like find those places. And I'm, you know, you'll never hear back from half those people. It's a whole different, that's a whole different world. I know nothing about, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it. Will you self publish? I if think it comes I'll, down to it. Yeah, um, I guess because I think it, I think when you've come this far and you've spent how many years I've been working on this, when you spent this much time, I think like you just need to see it through at this point. You know what I sure, mean? 100%. But all that sounds painful to you. And I, you self-published. <laughs> it just sounds like a lot of work. I'm like, Oh God. 
uh, that's just a whole different thing. But um, but I, yeah, it's, it's funny with, it's a rhythm thing. Yeah, I was really in it for a while, and then I just, like, I haven't touched it since March of this year. 2018. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> March of 2010. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I haven't touched it in a while, but I think about it all the time. I think about like how lazy I've been and need to like finish it. But I think the hardest part is when something's finished. Let's say you, if you made a cake and it's all really good, but you're like, Oh, I know I need to add a little bit to, but we're going to fit this in. It already looks really good. But when you think about for just the, pub if you do want to have a publisher take it on, you know, yeah, length, you know, they, 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 they do want it to be a certain amount of pages and, you know, things like that. But I don't know. Uh, but that's, that's, that's what my focus now. And I went back on stage this year, hadn't been on stage since the pandemic. And that was an interesting experience. I didn't think I enjoyed it anymore. When I went back, I was like, I don't think I like doing this anymore. You change your mind. Then, okay. well, you know, when you change your mind is when an audience is there. Yep. And do then it. you go, oh, that's right. This is for you to enjoy. Uh, rehearsals were, I mean, we had a, the show, I did two shows actually, two French shows. And the one was not your typical French show. We rehearsed over 200 hours for it. It was phenomenal. Oh, wow. And talk yeah. about creativity. I will say just a shout out from being in something. It was with minimal, you know, just, just a blank stage and just a, a, a an apron hanging. The things that this guy did as a director and a creative visionary with just use of movement and I will just, I don't want to give it away because I'm sure it'll, like uh, shirts. It, I mean, just his imagination was so incredible. And I think that's what I love the most was just people were so moved by it. And that was cool to experience again and be like, oh, wow. You know, you rehearse in a bubble and then you write in a bubble and then you give it over to your audience and they go, mm, or, oh my gosh, or, eh. Or I don't know, <laughs> but it was really cool to to um, just feel that relationship again with sure. an audience. Yeah. Where can people find your work? Just New Play Exchange or all over the place? Um. Yeah, the New Play Exchange. I think. Well, I think you have to be a, a member to see the actual plays. Because someone I was like, "Can I read that?" And I was like, right. "Yeah." And then like, "Oh, I couldn't see it." And I was like, "Oh, yeah. I think you have to be a member to." It's pretty reasonably it, priced. Um, I think for even for my like, oh, production wise, yeah. I think it's like maybe twenty five bucks for the year. Yeah, so totally, I yeah. would recommend um, doing that. But um, any place else? I mean, as far as just reading it, you can't really read it anywhere. Well, if they wanted to produce there. your work, where can they find it? Oh, uh, New Play Exchange, or you could reach out um, I, on Facebook, Dagnicker Official. You can reach out to me there. Do you have a website? But, um, I don't have a website. Right. Nope. And any yeah. other socials that you're on where people uh, can find Instagram, you? Okay. yeah. What's your, yeah. what's your Insta? <laughs> They're going to be like, this lady hasn't posted since 2010. I'm so lame at posting, I'll be I'm honest. Right oh, you. my gosh. I did, yeah, it's, I just, it seems like it's work. Like, I'm just like, oh, man. But, yes, I'm on Instagram as uh, Dagny Kerr, D-A-G-N-E-Y-K-E-R-R. -E -R, and then um, I have not been keeping up my Facebook, but it's Dagny Kerr Official um, is the actor, the creator page. Nice. But yeah. Good. Yeah, and I'm I'm around town doing stuff all the time, so I like it. Come, I like it. Come see me, Dagny. Thanks for coming on the Playwright Aww, Spotlight. Thank you for having me. I hope that was uh, it was a fun experience. I hope I gave a tidbit of of, of just right. Have fun. It was well yeah. worth the wait. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Playwright Spotlight. Again, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below, and share this video with a friend. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, be sure to leave a five-star review and subscribe to the channel. And in the meantime, and until we see each other again, keep writing.